employees and parents. In September, when the province started the REP program, I wrote to my MLA and the teachers union citing 22 pages of research on the violations of the Charter of Rights as well as the research from around the world showing these vaccines were not working. The teachers union especially concerned me because as teachers we are supposed to teach children to critically think and look at multiple sources of information to determine a balanced view of the research. When I called the teachers union they said that the rules were not meant to be fair, quote, they were meant to make people get the vaccine, end of quote. In that moment the teachers union had admitted to me that they were supporting coercion. I was told that I had to get the shot or pay for tests for two, every two days to come to work. As a single mom on a teacher's salary paying an extra $70 a week just to go to work was yet another hardship. When I received the mandates from my school, I sent them my research along with letters from my doctor and psychologist requesting that they pay for my test so I could go to work because I had extreme anxiety over the vaccine. Part of my extreme anxiety over the vaccines was that in May of 2021, I had a co-worker end up in the hospital for five weeks who was not able to walk for over two months after getting the second vaccine. By November, the only people in our school who had gotten COVID since the vaccine rollout were vaccinated staff members. They told me anxiety was not a legitimate reason for not getting the vaccine. I had to have a vaccine medical exemption to get any sort of accommodation at work. Keep in, in mind, I was still willing to test. I was begging them to pay for it at least or let me use the free kit. I was forced to go on medical leave to protect my job and my ability to provide for my child. This gave me so much anxiety. I wasn't sleeping, eating, and I would literally shake when I got emails from the board about their COVID policies. I broke into tears multiple times a day because I just wanted to be in the classroom with my kids and I wasn't allowed to. My board even had the audacity to send out emails that were doing everything they that that said they were doing everything they could to protect the mental health of staff and students. I wrote them a letter asking them how they were protecting my mental health and the mental health of the children in my classroom. I had a child whose main caregiver died of cancer in December and now he was going back to school dealing with that emotional trauma as well as the fact that his teacher wouldn't be returning. I asked the board who was looking out for these kids, how was not allowing me to take the free test protecting anyone, and why were they only requiring the unvaccinated to test when vaccination was not preventing spread? They didn't answer me. In January, I emailed my board explaining what, informal cons what informed consent was, what the adverse effects of the J&J &J vaccine were, and the dates that I had booked for the vaccine. I then asked who was taking responsibility for the liability if anything happened to me. Again, the school board didn't respond to my emails. Comically enough, I could not go to my appointment and ask all of the informed consent questions because I tested positive for COVID that day. I also know exactly who I got it from because I was on stress leave and not leaving my house. My friend who was training, it was from my friend who was training to be a police officer. The week prior, she had come over for tea. When she came to my house, she stopped at the door and said, we've been learning from home, we've been learning from home the last week because five in my course have COVID. I tested negative, but I have a runny nose. I laughed and said, even more proof the vaccine doesn't work because of all the police trainees had to be vaccinated in order to be in the program. I also said, come on in. I've been trying to get COVID for two years and have natural immunity. A couple of days later, she texted that she had tested positive. She texted that she had tested positive. Still, I wasn't worried about getting it. Two days later, I woke up with a runny nose and body aches. It was the day I was supposed to go get the vaccine. I tested myself with the free at-home kit the schools had sent home with my daughter. You know, the ones I was not allowed to use for work, but were completely okay for everyone else. I tested positive too and just laughed. I was hardly sick at all. The province dropped the mandates mid-February. It took my board three weeks weeks to drop them after the province had. At this time I had also received legal exemption cards from a lawyer and sent them to my board who informed me that exemptions weren't legitimate. Immediately after my board announced that they were pushing, pausing their mandate, one of my friends messaged me. I just happened to be teaching her son this year. She was so excited I could come back to work because the subs had been a disaster for my students. Even her child, who is a very strong and high functioning kid, was struggling. At the beginning of April, my doctor approved me to return
returned from stress sleep. My students were so excited I was back. We were all sitting on the floor having a class meeting when one girl said, I thought you were dead. We laughed about it because of the way she had said it, but that comment deeply concerned me. I told my students I had been taking care of my mental health and left it at that. When students in my classroom got COVID in April of 2021, that was one of the most difficult teaching days of my life. Many students were crying. They were worried that their classmate was going to die. To my surprise, the child who had tested positive was online with us the first day. We did a mental health check-in to see how everyone was feeling. I laughed so hard when the child with COVID got to speak. He said something like, I have COVID from hockey. I was already better before I even got the test back. That part really affected my mental health. The part that really affected my mental health was that some parents who were told to isolate their children actually locked their kids in their rooms for two weeks. If at any wow. point in time prior to this, I had had a child reported being locked in their room, I would have had to call social services because we all know that's neglect. Yet these parents were just following the health advisory, so now all of a sudden, it was okay. I was in tears almost daily with two weeks, for those two weeks because I was struggling so much with how to help my students' mental health who were locked in their rooms for two weeks. Not every family member went to this extreme, but the ones who were fearful did. It still haunts me to my core that someone would lock their 10 and 11 year olds in a room for two weeks, feeding them by leaving a tray outside their door. Today I'm still trying to recover my mental health from how I was treated by my school board and the government of Canada. I worry so much about our kids and the trauma they've experienced. Even my daughter, who never lived in a home filled with COVID fear, was very fearful of others because of the trauma she experienced at school. For example, while skiing, I noticed a child who had fallen and needed help. I yelled down to my daughter to stop so I could stop and help the child who had no adults around but was stuck under a foot of fresh snow and could not get his ski free. I helped the child up and he was able to ski down to his parents. But when I got down to my daughter, she lost it on me. She was crying and screaming that I was going to get COVID from being near a stranger. The indoctrination in children from this is my biggest worry and concern to this day. In closing, my goal is to help people understand that the fringe minority was not made up of racist bigots and misogynists, like the Prime Minister said. I think if others could step in my shoes and see my deep concern for our children, they would realize we need to ensure that this never happens again. Thank you. Thank you. Great job. Thank you. I, I know I said that I was going to be quiet, but I lie a lot. Um, I forgot one friend had We're asked me to uh, just today, quickly share her mother's story. But I just want um, to show you this. Who ended up getting vaccinated. Uh, they're setting up uh, kind of like a wireless digital grid in rural, semi-rural uh, Okotoks. This is just south of Calgary, Alberta, Canada. And at all the major intersections yeah, now, they have these uh, then, uh, basically nowhere, taking the intersection, intersections so online. So these are Wi-Fi modems that are linked in to, the to all the cameras. We don't know if there's new ones coming up, but there it is there. This is what they're doing all over Canada, the US, Australia, around the world. But see it there but this is I talked to the local residents this is something new and it's just part of this technocratic grid but we're gonna have to monitor this so there Let's see are here they are there tens of thousands of people in this province and we've got these LA, LED lights and they're connected to online as well So we'll update update these posts later today, but this was um, about all the people affected by the lockdowns. Uh, it's too bad they didn't talk about all the people who were um, forced into unemployment and can't travel. And then we've had um, people protesting who were, you know, we, we, we all know about the, their accounts getting frozen, uh, people getting cens censored, and, and we also had people put on this is part of the trauma that Canadians have gone through, at least those standing up to what we consider the, this uh, tyrannical agenda that's going on. But share your comments. Uh, we have
keep speaking up and, and, and keep growing awareness. Uh, the struggle goes on.